everyone, welcome to session eight of my Magnetized Soul Love program with my one-on-one -on -one client, Lise. My name is Tracia Tiwari. I'm an emotional intelligence, love, and relationship coach, and I help career women and entrepreneurs over 35 magnetize soul love, or if you're in a twin flame relationship, help you with uh, healing twin flame separation. So today we are in session eight, as I said, and this is my client, Lise. Hi, Lise. Hi. Hi, How are you today? I'm good. Yeah, and we actually, on, on the YouTube series, you wouldn't realize, but we actually didn't meet in two weeks. We had to skip last week, so I have to catch up from last yeah. week. <laughs> and um, today we'll work a little bit on seeing the wealth that you already have in your life, um, because wealth is not only monetary. It is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, we'll talk a little bit about the last time as we dealt with like the parents and the worthiness because that is important and I want to be sure you're good with that and yeah if anything else comes up you just let me know okay no problem all right so let's just start with our grounding so we can, you're gonna put your foot feet sorry flat on the floor you're gonna sit comfortably in your chair where you are sit up hands palms facing up and we're gonna take a deep breath in one two three four hold and out eight seven six five four three two one another breath in one two three four hold and out eight seven six five four three two Last time in one, two, three, four, hold and out eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I'm just going to invite you to set an intention for the session. Maybe there's something on your heart, maybe you're conscious of it, maybe you're not conscious of it, but you're just going to set an intention for this session for whatever you would like. Okay, and then you can picture yourself um, in a garden, just being, just being magically and wonderfully you, noticing everything that you like in nature, in the smell of the grass, in the color of the sky, in the clearness of the sky, in the clearness of your path forward. Just notice the atmosphere, the energy, and the fact that you can just be. You actually don't need to do anything. You just need to be you, uniquely you. And as you notice you, just notice maybe there's someone close to you, someone approaching you. And just notice anything you can about him. You may see an energetic figure or you may actually see someone. And if you do, just notice anything about his hair, his face, the clothes he has on, uh, what he has on, on his feet. Just see what you can notice. And see, he's coming up to talk to you. And I'm just going to hold space for you to have a conversation with him. Anything that comes to mind, don't doubt anything. Just allow the conversation to be.
And if there's anything in particular you want to ask to help you on your journey, any, anything you want to receive, just be open and ask and just see what you get. All right, and then you can, as he makes his way to leave, um, maybe he gives you a hug, whatever is natural, and know that he's always with you. <clears throat> and as he leaves, he's going to do whatever he still needs to do before it is time for you guys to meet. And as he leaves, there's no sorrow, there's no sadness, there's only love and joy for this interaction. Right, and as he leaves, you can find a place to rest on a blanket, under a tree or whatever you are seeing. And know that every single thing on your heart, every desire is coming true. And the only thing you need to do is to just be you all right let's take a deep breath in and out another breath in and out last time in and out And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. How are you? Good. I oh. like that picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <buddy. laughs> As you already know, I don't need to put... I was seeing him very close to you. What did you see? I don't want to tell you. I, want to know oh, what you I actually... So, at first, I was, like, very happy... Um, so I was in the garden, there were like butterflies fluttering around mm. me. I was like almost like twirling in the sun, you know, those movie scenes when yes. you see them just spinning and the sun hitting you. So I was very free and happy there. Um, the person that I saw came in was God. Okay, <laughs> it was in a person, so it was him, he came and um from just noticing the presence i was um i told him no well i was of course happy to see him and then we i told him i completely trust him and i know that he is um working everything out for me um yeah uh it when um when you had told me i could ask anything I didn't even, uh, I actually said to him, um, I don't even have to ask anything because I know you're taking care of, of everything for me. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it Okay, okay, nice. So, so this is a really big message for you mm -hmm. to just be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because I saw my person come in and I, what I saw was like he was helping your, your person was interested in you saw God. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw him come in. Okay, good. Oh, so you yeah. basically have nothing to worry about. Yeah. That's what I got from the entire <laughs> um, exercise. Yeah, and I actually, I saw you very tall too. Did you see yourself the same height or taller? 
Or it wasn't prominent to you? It wasn't, yeah, prominent. It it looked, it, to me, it looked like regular me. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so let's just breathe this in, because this is really okay. auspicious to me. Okay. Um, you don't have to ask anything. And, and, and even like in your day-to-day -day life, this is good to remind yourself, like when you're because things happen and maybe we question or we have a bout of loneliness, but okay. it's good to keep this in mind that, that you know he's working everything out for you and you, you don't even need to ask anything because mm -hmm. you know you're taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, anything else? That was that mainly, that was the, yeah, okay. the main point. Um, all right. What are three wins from, well, the last couple of weeks? The last two weeks. So one was um, recently they added me as a lector in church, right? So which, me, which just means that lector. So one of the lectures. So you do go up and you do readings and stuff okay. like that, right? So I used to do it way back in my teenage days. So they, I guess they just um asked if I wanted to rejoin and at first I mean anything that involves now our, our church is really small right it's not one of the big parishes so, but anything um that involves standing up in front of a crowd and all those things you know mentally prepare um physically all of those things right and because I think it's also because I haven't done it in so long so at first I was feeling like, um, gosh, you know, sometimes they go to church. Well, for me, I used to go to church just to be in a little peace zone and be by yourself and those kind of things, right? Not to socialize or anything. So at first I started to look at it like, gosh, I have to prepare now. I have to get up and do these things. And they let you know from before. So there was two weeks back to back that they put me to read and the second week I was, I was just thinking of course to do this again and, and I, I was just having that dreary feeling about it I actually ended up not going to church the second time and I just messaged them and tell them that um I can't make it and if they could reschedule me so but this so that second time when I didn't go I I told myself, no, Liz, this is starting to um, affect you actually going to church. Mm -hmm. So I end up telling myself, well, I, I took the time and, and I started to like tell myself, um, no, you can't, can't look at it like this, right? Look at it as the fact that um, because they, they were putting me like back to back weeks on these things. I was like, look at it as if, you know, they are, you are thinking that it's mentally draining. You have to prepare and stand up in front of this crowd and whatever. But they are looking at you and it could be the entire church looking at you as, oh, she reads really well and she keeps the crowd um, alive or, or mm -hmm. active and um, they're listening to her. So maybe she's really a good reader and hence the reason they keep asking her and then I started to tell myself to think of it as an honor they maybe look they see you as a, a um I don't know like a experienced public speaker and things like that so I started to think of it like that and then now I feel like every time they put me down to read I, I take it as that opportunity like Oh well, this is the honor, and oh, they want me to read yeah. again. I'm sure, cause I'm, you know, it's almost yeah. like you're so good at it that they just want you to keep doing it. Yeah, and that's that's just a really good example of how reframing how you feel about a situation can change it, and mm -hmm. and and we don't know either. There's no truth to either, so it's just best to pick. Well, we don't know if there's truth to either, right? So just best to pick the more empowering thought which it, it is an honor because it is an honor to speak i mean you're into your religion mm -hmm. so it is an honor to mm -hmm. speak on behalf of 
um, the word of God, however you all say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and to share and to uh, encourage and motivate other persons who I'm sure yeah. <laughs> excuse me, look up to you um, yeah. for you sure. and where you are in your life. And that, that is really an excellent um, example of yeah. how something could either be mentally draining or truly nourishing. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I, I saw it, because I know you always tell us, change the stories, change, yes. <laughs> you know, these things. And it, it's just actually experience on a first hand, which I, I mean, I have before, but yeah. because of this, how I used to feel about it before, it, it was a really nice feeling to just, you know, switch like yeah. that. Yeah, and this is what I want want for you all to be able to integrate everything we talk about into your life, into all aspects, not only with your the person you want, but into mm-hmm. all aspects. Because that, that is when you truly live. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, and the next one. So mm-hmm. the next one, and this is something I know we went through already, not particularly with these sessions, but before with money right and i know you would have spoken i needed lives on it where um not to to speak it as if it, you put on it out there and it's gonna come back to you tenfold right yes, yes. and so since the beginning of this year i've been expecting a payment from um well through the government right more or less mm-hmm. and since um january this year and of course like everything it takes forever right but when you know you're expecting it you know you you tend to i mean and this is what i was doing i don't know i don't want to speak to everybody but i was watching my balance on my bank account and then adding on this amount that i'm expecting and thinking that's what i have right so when when it's not reflected in my bank account of course it's um, you know, you keep feeling as okay, when is this gonna come? You're calling and all these things, right? And then eventually I just said, you know what, Lee, it's it's not like your account is zero. You have sufficient. If anything happens, you could take care of it. If anything unforeseen happens, mm-hmm. you can take care of it. So there's no reason for you to worry about these things, right? And just um um, well, I know we didn't see each other for two weeks, so it would have been like the week before. I start, I started to tell myself these things and just say, you know what, it's coming to you, but you can't, you can't control when, but you, you're in a good position. And I just let it go. And one day I just logged on to check my account. I check it often to make sure you know everything. <laughs> and I saw it. I saw it just appeared, and I was like. I said, in my mind, I said, this is what Shreela's been telling me about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so awesome. When yeah. we let go of resistance, things just happen. Mm-hmm. And to think, I mean, as I said, you just said it, there's no truth to saying that if you had let go of it before, you might have guessed it before yeah. or anything like that. We <laughs> don't know. But it's just, it's really empowering to see that once you let go of it, it really does happen. Yeah, and, and that's your your thing as a creator. And once you know, once you know it's coming to you, um, mm-hmm. it, it's really understanding how how you live like with lack as opposed to um, uh, no mm-hmm. or or in wealth, which is what we're gonna work on today. Mm-hmm. So, and and you said it. You know, it's it's not like you needed it you're not mm-hmm. lacking anything and then when you had that realization that you're not lacking anything you're good so you already have it right then it yeah. Keeps... yeah yeah so yeah well, that's really awesome and and we also trust well i also trust that whatever i get comes at the, the right time so maybe mm-hmm. like earlier like just say it was me and maybe if i got whatever earlier maybe i would have you know invested in something that wasn't good for me and I'm, yeah and so i get it at a time where it's just right for me and what i'm what yeah I'm, so but that's yeah. really good. i don't really want some two weeks what's the other one yeah. <laughs> yes and yeah. then so 
right. The last one is it is work related. So I had a very unfortunate situation this week to deal with, right? And um, it was so bad that for as long as I've been where I'm working. It was the first time I really considered resigning and <laughs> looking for a new job and thing. It was it was bad. And um you, after all of that, like I, I spent maybe the first two days or so thinking like that and thinking of course this is so impossible to come out of and things like that. And then by day three I completely changed it and I, I just let it go and I told Bowen, I prayed about it. I prayed about three times in one morning about it and I told um, God, you know what, I'm handing it over to you and I'm putting it in your hand. And however it turns out, it, that's his call. And I mean... Soon right after, I felt a lot better about the situation. I was able to take charge of it and get a solution quicker than if I was just staying in that feeling of this is impossible and I don't know how to get through this. And, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of feeling, I, I suddenly felt a lot better. Um, I had to call contacts, of course, at, at the position I am. I have contacts in, like, the in banks and different entities so i had to call them in order to get through but but the fact that i didn't think of that before because i was in this dreary state where i'm like I, there's no getting through with this um and then that complete switch when i put it into god's hand and then the idea so i thought you know what maybe i should call this person and get some advice and see if they could help me and then this one helped me and this one put me on to someone and sooner or later it was resolved and it was just uh something i thought i couldn't resolve on my own because i mean I, it it could have been that i had to just hand it over to a higher level manager and say well you take care of this but I felt like I couldn't handle it on my own and then it turned out that I could and I was able to resolve it okay oh my well own. yeah that is again that is a really um awesome realization and and you see how when we think in there's no solution or it's impossible mm -hmm. we don't get the answer because we're creating that we, we're saying it's impossible so God is like, yeah, it's impossible. That's what you're creating. Yeah. And then be able to switch that and, and hand it over <clears throat> to God, universe, whatever you believe in. And let go of the resistance. The answers come because all the answers are within you. I, I see it as, you know, when you're thinking there's no way or whatever, it's, it's just like you're just blocking your own intelligence, your own wisdom yeah. from giving you all the answers you want. Yeah. yeah. Which you already have. Yeah, and, and we have so much, even as introverted people, we have so much access to persons just like us because there are lots of um, introverted people in the world, but we meet persons through different, um, different fora. So it's not only like you have to party to meet someone, which is what we learn, or you have to go to this uh -huh. networking event, and that's where all the important people are so you need to be there you meet people who will help you just in your everyday life and they're attracted to you uh -huh. and, the and they will always help you whenever yeah. you do that. and um to to remember that hey i have a contact here i have a contact there again is, is your mind being clear and knowing it, you're gonna solve it you're gonna yeah solve it. yeah so I, I think gosh you're doing excellent please yeah, I was real happy of that particular situation. Yeah, yeah. To go from thinking you need to resign to just take <laughs> exactly it. like I don't want the stress. I want a new job. <laughs> it was, it was from there to I did this on my own, and I I when I talk out through the the situation, and I was able to resolve it on my own. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, this is a really good example of soul evolution. So our, our souls, we, we came here to experience human life and, uh -huh. and to evolve. And how we evolve is through challenges, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then when we 
get the when we are in the, the midst of the challenge when when we take the path of the impossibility and woe unto me you actually stop your soul from evolving and that's how your soul your body stays misaligned with your soul and we develop like disease and, and stuff like that but when yeah. you you didn't you didn't take this perspective but it's basically what you did when, when you take on the challenge of this is evolution for my soul and let me see um what i can do it's completely different and then your soul enjoyed the experience because it came here to experience the challenge and getting over it and mm-hmm. you feel really because then, then you yeah up, right and this is a really good a, a really good example of that because I, I saw a post this week which was so true that said um it was something like uh being being happy or having a good life doesn't mean you're happy all the time having a uh-huh. good life or what's best for you does it what's best for you doesn't mean you're happy all the time what's the best for you means that you you take on your challenges or, or whatever you have in this life um knowing that this is what's best for you so so like instead mm-hmm. of saying the bad things knowing that way this is my path uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah so, Okay, good. So before we go on, do you have any questions on anything? Mm-mm, no. Okay. I just want to ask a little bit, and I just check them back in notes here. On the last session where we spoke about the family dynamics with your dad, we did um, reframing of the love as feeling from conditional to unconditional for your dad and your mom. And we spoke about things your dad would really be proud of you for and that your mom would be really proud of you for. I just wanted to know if, if since then, if, well, I know your dad has passed, um, but like with your Mm -hmm. mom, um, has anything changed? Has anything shifted? Or how do you feel about the relationships and, and the whole, um, feeling that you had, feeling that your love was conditional? Um, so, um, my mom, out of my two parents, my mom was the one I had more resentment to growing up, right? And I don't know if you pick up on that based on the conversation <laughs> or the questions. Is your mom that one is more? Yeah, I had a lot more resentment. And then she's, I think because also she is still here and I still see the things that I resented yeah. from childhood. She still does, right? But, um, since that session i have been actively putting those things past me i did feel a lot better after the exercise and i just i've been doing more for her so she is she's not a um how to put not like a completely independent person because of her age and she doesn't drive and things like that so she needs a lot done around uh, help around with um certain errands and stuff like that right and you know when you're working but both of us are working me and my brother um it's hard to fit in the time Mm -hmm. but also she tends to expect that i would be the one (laughs) to do it right so to make the time not so much that he's busy and he's this and he's that but i i would right and i put all those things after the session i put all those things be behind me and i actually start doing things before she even asked me so mm-hmm. like i know we have to carry down garbage or whatever and she 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 organized those things right but I would ask her, instead of waiting for her to say, can you do this? I would come up front and I would ask her, you have this, you want me to carry this down, things like that, you know? And uh, I mean, it's like, I could tell that she she sees the difference. She hasn't pointed it out or outwardly tongue to you. And, and I'm not looking for that, but I just noticed that after the exercise, I, I'm willingly wanting to do those things for her. Okay. You but know? that's your, your compassion. But, and how you feel about doing it? Good. Like, I feel I feel better about it. It's, it's more like I'm taking the burden off of her. You know? And, you know, she's at that age where she shouldn't even have those burdens. So I think I, I'm looking at it like that. Like, 
I want to make her life easier now. Mm-hmm. At, yeah. at this stage, so yeah. yeah. But we just have to make sure you don't become resentful by doing that. That's asking yeah. how you feel about it. Yeah. No, but it, it's actually that I want to do it. Though. Okay. Good. I feel like I want to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. And what about like with your, your brother? Is there any... um? Is there any resentment there or like? Mm-hmm, no, actually, I've let all those things go. Okay. But he, we, we've never had a very close relationship, my brother and I. I don't know if it's the age difference and the, I mean, he's, oh, he's older. old. He's three years older. Oh, okay. That's how much age difference. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think when we, when we were young, when we were kids, they... They had him separate, so uh, okay. us, me and my sister. And then for most of adults, because when my dad passed, he would have been the only guy in the house. So I noticed him sticking to himself, and he's always been um, like that. Yeah, but but there's no resentment between us. Yeah, I'm just Vincent. Yeah, and... um. So do you talk to him at all? Yeah, we do, but not like deep conversations, like how's work and how is those things. Uh, yeah, we don't speak like that. Okay. And what do you want for that relationship? Um, I guess maybe, maybe just to know that he could talk to me. I don't know that he feels that the reason he doesn't speak to, to or or socialize or anything with us is because um I don't think he feels he can't but but somewhat sometimes you know you just wanna know that he he is aware that there is an outlet that he can talk to to us and I say in us because I think the entire family feels like that. Yeah. Okay, um, so how would you feel about um, just letting him know that? Like, like say, um, I don't, well, we would, I wouldn't call his name because this is recorded, right? Mm-hmm. But not that I know his name. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Let's just say Frank. Um, uh-huh. You know, in, in your own way, because you would be, do it differently from me, but just saying, you know, Frank, uh-huh. if you know, um, you know, like as a sister, I mean, you could, you could say I'm going through my personal development and and I'm really finding happiness within myself. And I just want you to know if you um, if you need anything, I could help. I, I don't mind talking to you, whatever it is you want to see, right? I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just like a two, three minutes. How would you feel yeah. about that? That's I, actually nice. I, what's that? I had to do that for my brother. Yeah. I actually like the words you said. I mean, how you know, I'm finding happiness and things. I, I liked how you phrased it. Okay. So it sounds a lot better. I, I thought, I mean, I've thought about doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, But because of how the relationship is, I thought, like, if I just go up and say, you know, you can talk to us about anything, it would have been weird. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I like the way you put it. So, yeah, yeah I could I could try that. That is nice. Yeah. And do you all have like time to get like do you all eat together like alone? So I wouldn't want you to do it with other people around you know, I, uh-huh. I would want you to do it alone just so you don't have to worry about judgment. You know, you don't have to worry about yeah. what people think it, right? Um yeah. you know, whatever. Um but do you have time time alone or, or like how not really, but I could just go if I need to do it alone. I'll have to go into his room or something and talk to him about it. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. So, so you have an, an avenue, like you know. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, good. So, yeah. if you want, you could try that, and uh-huh. um, over the next week, and just it's just an offer. You don't not expecting anything from him, or it's uh-huh. just as a sister, yeah. you are younger. Yeah. You're uh-huh. younger. But just, but, just, but just as a sister who now in the family is kind of like the leader because you have gone through self-development, you're understanding things at a different level. You don't need everybody else to understand at your level, but just in whichever way um, you feel inclined to, because it's not an obligation, 
you're feeling mm-hmm. kind of well, um, you just give yourself permission to do that without expectation. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I wanted, I wanted to talk in this session a, a little bit about um, wealth, what we recognize right. wealth as, right? So we do have a societal programming that wealth is in having material things, right? Uh-huh. Money, uh-huh. like a house, maybe a car, a vacation home, nice, expensive things. That is our programming. And um, wealth is actually energetic. So it's not necessarily that you need to see proof of a nice home, but what, what it is, is knowing that within you, you have everything you need to just be. And that is your wealth, your breath, right your breath is your wealth your ability to breathe your whole body body system is like in the meditation you know we say we have 30 trillion cells in our body Mm -hmm. which alone is wealth an abundance of wealth right so i just wanted because i think in the last session maybe you made a comment on uh or maybe we were talking in between and there was some comment on attracting someone who is wealthy in and it is important for us to see that we have that already Mm -hmm. for that to come in right so i just wanted to do an exploration like a a curious um, scavenger hunt on where in your life you are already wealthy not necessarily money wise even though we you know you have a good job and and all of that but not necessarily money wise but more like energetic wise, more in the things you get to experience, even if it's your house, um, that's that's cool. But I just wanted to talk about three ways in which you're already wealth wealthy in your own right in your life. Okay. Um, the first one that comes to mind is my daughter because I think I have the most amazing daughter, uh-huh. and um, and I know. It's not just a mother's bias because there's co-workers who would tell me, oh, yeah, yes, we all know you have an obedient daughter and, you, you know, um, thing, things like that. So I think she is my first level of wealth. Okay, so your daughter, and that is a really big one. Nobody, there's mm-hmm. no... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the next one is, I think, um, I don't know the word to use to describe it, but I think personality, because I'm so, um, I guess, I'm so, my, I don't know, charisma, because I get along so well with people, with everyone in, in work, in uh, like friendship things like that it's easy for me to meet new people or for people to be drawn to my personality right and remember you said you got out from your dad yeah correct okay good and then the last one is i think just knowing I mean, I don't know if this is one, but Once just for you, it's one. <laughs> Once, um, just knowing, like, just to be in, in peace and not to force things. I think that is a big one for me. I let go That's of a things. Really big very, one. Yeah, I let go and I don't hold on to grudges, to bad experiences with people i know when to let go of things and just move on with life yeah and this is a really a really big one because in in being able to do this you actually create an or elongate in your own life because when you the more peaceful you are the easier it is for your body to function like your organs 
to function, your blood to flow and, and all of that. And when you stay in or hold on to like grudges or things that hurt you, um, what that is the beginning of the dis disease in your body, which eventually right. leads to disease. So, so this is really, really important in terms of um, being wealthy. Your peacefulness is really important in terms um, of being wealthy because if you think of the uh, the effects of uh, poor health and how much money you can spend on your mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you understand um, how 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 much wealth you are creating for yourself energetically by staying in peace does that make sense yeah yeah it does yeah so it's good it's good for you to um uh, remind yourself of these things you know like when you're thinking of um, the kind of life you want you already have you, al you already have everything you want yeah you're, yeah you're already wealthy um you already have good relationships um you already know how to deal with conflict we, we will talk about it in another session but having a child i i do think you have to know how to deal with conflict um, all right 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 so i mean th that's like what i say like you keep saying like we have all the answers within within us and we already are all that we want but it's just for us to recognize that oh wait i don't lack i already have this i, I already have everything i want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so we'll do a, a meditation around this and then we'll we'll end yeah okay, okay. all right so I think it will just be a simple, a simple meditation. Okay. All right, so let's just plant your feet flat on the floor. And again, we just really congratulating ourselves for taking this time to develop our own self, to understand better why we are here, as opposed to the programming, and to really sit into our true selves. The self that is unassuming, not lacking, and knows that all it has to do is be. And we're going to take a deep breath in. One, two, three, four, hold. And out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Another breath in. One, two, three, four, hold. And out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time in one, two, three, four, hold and out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And again, let's just go back to the garden. So I want you to picture you, Lise, like maybe still resting or relaxing in the garden. And high up, high, 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 high up in the sky, in the heavens, I want you to see your higher self, your higher self just looking down on you and just smiling and so, so proud of you. So proud of your progress, so proud of your, you taking the initiative to really step into you. And just picture her saying, you know what, at least I see all that you're doing. I see all the wealth that you have. I see the amazing relationship with your daughter. I see the way in which you carry yourself and I see the way in which you get along with people and people are so magnetized to you. And I see how you've also been able to let go of grudges and really fill yourself with peacefulness. And I'm so happy for you. I am gonna take all that you have and magnify it a hundred times over. So just picture her like in a little golden pot stirring everything that you already have, all the wealth you already have. And just as she stirs it, just see it getting more and more and more and until it's just like overflowing because it's a hundred times more. And as it overflows, just picture all of that wealth pouring down onto you, into your hair, like glistening with golden, golden coins, golden sparkles into your, into your body, into your bloodstream, through your face. Uh, through your neck, 
your shoulders your chest your tummy all the way down to the tips of your toes just picture your whole body just glistening as all of this wealth that you already have is just magnified and picture her continuing to pour and pour and pour and pour it's never ending just continue her picture to pour and pour and pour until you feel fulfilled and know that at any point in time you could always just ask her to help you remember if you need to but in this moment and going forward you have everything you already need a hundred times magnified and let's just breathe into that in and out again in and out Last time in and out. And just soak up all of that energy, all of that love. Maybe she's blowing kisses to you. And as you continue to rest in your garden, know that this, this energy, this wealth, this love, this is going to keep on being magnified. All right, so when you're ready, you can take a deep breath in and out. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. How do you feel? Oh, really good. Did you feel fulfilled and full of mm -hmm. And I saw this time when I was, when the hundred times over that was um, pouring onto me, I saw myself growing like a giant. Ah, good, good. I was seeing it, yeah. Good, so that's expansion of your energy and of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that brings us, and you could stay in that. I'm still feeling the energy, so you could stay in it after we end, right? Um, yeah. Do you have any questions or anything you want to bring up? No, no. Today was a good session. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, all right. So this is the end. This is session eight. So it's the end of two months. So next next session, usually I just, you know, go over, make sure we're tracking where you want to be. And um, mm -hmm. we could work on, we could do en the energy protection or dealing with conflict, either one. But okay. I can't have anything else as we come in um, more to the end. Um, just be sure to let me know, right? So we make sure we deal with it. Okay. But I think Sounds you can do it. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Take care. Bye.